guys are really lucky. Um, so a question that you're surely sick of by now, we all know that Bridge Nine Records is primarily known for hardcore bands, but in recent years, you've started signing more diverse acts like Strike Anywhere, Polar Bear Club, and now you guys. Did the label reach out to you, or did you seek them out? Um, you know, we talked to Jimmy from Polar Bear Club a couple of months ago, and uh, he really pointed you guys out. He had great things to say. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was uh, the way we kind of found out. We found out through the grapevine that uh, they they were listening to our album get better at the uh, at their offices. So we just basically just wrote them like, "Hey, you want to put out this record?" And they just wrote back, "Yeah," and that's how it worked. And we didn't really we didn't really care that it was an all hardcore label. We all like hardcore music, and we just uh, yeah, we, we like the people that work there and the way that they do things. They always have new ideas. It's cool. Awesome. So let that be a lesson to you kids. If you have a dream to be in a band, write to a record label and it'll happen, no matter what. Alright, how would you describe the band's growth from Get Better to Pebble? Um, I feel like, I feel like between the two, it was like a three year gap between the releases, but actually like a four year gap between the writing. And uh, I feel like we all grew up a lot between those years. And um, I feel like, much, like I, I still love Get Better, but like Pebble is way up my alley of like what I would like to listen to. You know, I can I can I definitely see my influences shining through it a little bit better. <laughs> well, and actually, on that note, uh, according to the liner notes, it seems like on Get Better the lyrics were kind of split a little bit, you know, pretty evenly. But with Pebble, you got most of the lyrics, you know, as far as writing. Um, was that a conscious decision, or was it just you, you had more inspiration for the lyrics at the time? Uh, well, it was more so just I ended up writing a bunch of lyrics, and Sheena kind of just was busy and didn't really get around to it. You know, I, she, I'm sure she'll have a lot more on the next album, but it wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't like something we decided, or it's not like she wrote a bunch of all or a bunch of songs and was like, you know, the lyrics weren't good. It was more so just she just wrote one song. And, kind of turned out. And as far as your producer for Pebble, Jay Robbins, who we all know from uh, Jawbox, were you a fan of growing up, or and how'd you snag in? Uh, that, I mean, that's why we, we just chose to work with him. He, Jawbox is one of my favorite bands. Uh, just sonically, like the, the guitar tones and the drummer, it's just like, very, very influential. So. And then also we were big fans of like Justice Brazil and Jawbreaker and a lot of the, and even you know Against Me recorded with him. So it was uh, we li listened to his productions and his music. Big fans of him as a person. So he was awesome too. He's such a good dude. So it's one of the best recording experiences ever. Max, this one's for you. Um, before becoming the band's current bass player, you were involved with the band kind of behind the scenes. Um, what were you doing? Um, I just went out for a summer, uh, just on tour. I was kind of like, it's kind of tour managing, um, I guess. I was uh, doing some, just hanging out. Um, yeah, I mean, I went uh, across the entire U.S. with you guys for like two months. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yep. Your shirts or whatever merchandise on people around, like in the supermarket or at a record store or something, has that ever happened to you? And what do you do in that situation? Do you go up to them like, that's my band, or just kind of play it cool? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it happens actually. It's funny you bring that up. Uh, a couple days ago, I got a voicemail from my stepdad, and uh, he was driving through West Virginia, heading home, which, you know, we're from Buffalo, New York, and uh, he was just like, hey, I just wanted to call and let you know that uh, I'm following a car that has a Lemuria sticker on the back. Just thought it was cool. Bye. And I was like, oh, wow. Well, yeah, it's kind of crazy, you know, that things are getting out that far, you know. I mean, not that, I mean, we played West Virginia like three years ago, but I don't know. It's neat. Definitely neat. Um, so you guys probably have a lot of downtime on tour. What do you guys do to pass the time? Any unusual hobbies? Anyway? We mainly just eat a lot. <laughs> we like, that's pretty much most of our free time on tour is spent searching for vegetarian restaurants and going to them. Uh, occasionally record shopping. We've talked about how amazing it would be in our off time to get like massages, you know, and like pedicures, manicures, that kind of stuff, but uh, that's not really realistic. <laughs> <laughs> Um, 
so Alex, um, you started your own record label, Art of the Underground. Mm -hmm. Want to say anything about that? Yes, yeah, it's, it's still going. I started about uh, 11 or 12 years ago, and it. Uh, I put out a lot of albums, and now I'm just kind of focusing on a single series where I put out a 7-inch a month. It's kind of like a subscription thing, like a magazine subscription, but I release a 7-inch each month with uh, a different artist with two exclusive songs. And uh, that's kind of like the main thing I do now, because being on the road a lot, it's hard for me to put out full links for bands and actually like be able to support them, you know? Awesome. So I'm just focusing on doing the little temporary, you know, oh, this record's out from now and then it's gone, you know? If you wrap up this tour, you guys will be traveling to Europe with Cheap Girls. Any European places you guys are especially excited to go to or revisit if you've been there before or anything? I think, I think uh, Russia. We've never been to Russia yeah. before. Um, all of us have been to Europe. I've never been to Europe with Lemuria, but I've been to Europe on my own. And uh, I mean, I'm excited for everywhere that we're going to. But Russia yeah. is definitely like entirely uncharted territory for us. Yeah. Have no idea what to expect. So, nice. yeah, that'll be pretty awesome. Yeah, that's pretty much what it's going to say. So, besides Pebble, obviously, um, any favorite albums of 2011 that you guys have been listening to a lot? You both have to answer this one. Yeah, I'm trying to, trying to think of what's come out this year. Because I'd say, for 2010, I'd say Super Chunk, and uh, Majesty's Ready. That's a good one, yeah. What's come out this year? I'm trying to think. I get bad at, like, what's come out. Can you guys give us, like, a multiple choice? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what has come out recently? The new Manchester Orchestra is pretty big. Yeah. I haven't heard of that yet. New Foo Fighters? Foo Fighters, yeah. Well, I haven't heard, heard that yet either. We talked oh, to wow. Tom. Tom said Foo Fighters was his, that we asked him that question. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, haven't caught, I haven't caught up yet on, like, the past, like, five or six months. New Bounce and Composure is really good. Right? I haven't heard it yet. We played with them and they were really good. But it's a good record. <sighs> yeah, this is tough because I'm still listening to stuff from last year. Well, what are you listening to then? You can't answer okay, that. Okay, alright. Super Chunk, uh, <laughs> a bunch of Fleetwood Mac, uh, Lindsey Buckingham, Stevie Nicks era. I mean, I know, I know it does, you guys, it, it, some people don't like it, you know, some people are like, oh, that's just like radio crap, but seriously, pick up the album Tusk because it's Not just like, it's, Fantastic. My dad's favorite band. Yeah, it's so good. Um, what else? We've been listening to a lot of Thin Lizzy in the car. Yeah. Uh, I've been listening to a lot of Motown recently. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, uh, and then, what else? Some newer band. I mean, we listen to Cheap Girls. I mean, we're going on tour with them, so. I don't know. We love that band. We also love both the bands we're on tour with, but we haven't been listening to them on this tour, but we do listen to them on other tours. We don't really need to listen to them on this tour. So, yeah. Now this is how I always end interviews. You guys are stuck on a desert island, you only have one album to listen to for the rest of your life. What is it? Uh, man, well at the moment, I think my answer to this would constantly be changing, but right now, uh, Super Chunk, here's to shutting up. I could listen to that album over and over and over again until I die. I would go with uh, Magnetic Fields, uh, 69 Love Songs, because I get three CDs worth of music, 69 songs, and it's one of my favorite bands of all time. Actually, I should have said that in the last question. I mean, I listen to Magnetic Fields all the time. It's so. my choice. All right, well, the good news is you're not on an island. You can listen to whatever you want, watch whatever you want. You're okay. And the other bit of good news for you guys is you survived the interview. That's it. Congratulations. <laughs> thank you. Very so, Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah. I want to thank all the listeners out there for putting up with me jabbering on. Um, you should definitely look into Lemuria's Pebble. Only if you like good music. It's available wherever you buy music. And uh, thanks for listening. Thanks, Pirate, for helping me out. And, uh, yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.